Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to analyze everything money's take on Google. Uh, I did post a, my evaluation on Google yesterday and looked through some of the financials and stuff like that. And uh, I'm simply going to watch this video. It's a 10 minute video. I've watched a little bit of it, and this is where I uh, had originally just disagreed with one of, the, one of the things that was stated and I thought to myself okay let's go and make a video on this and state my opinion on some of the things now I, I'm not just going to be bashing I hope I'm not just bashing them the entire video um, but nonetheless I do think that everything money teaches a process that's very good for new investors and definitely not one of the there's definitely worse YouTube channels out there than everything money 100% I've gotten a lot of value out of everything money itself I'm not a huge fan of of some of the videos of course but nonetheless we're going to match my evaluation up with their evaluation for Google now also I'm not a licensed financial advisor everything in this video contains only my opinion as for entertainment purposes only uh, but we are going to uh, analyze this and uh, we'll see what we think Credible business high cash flow low yeah, debt, 10 minute and it absolutely owns the online world of advertising they do such a great job oh and by the way they own the top two search engines in the world google.com and youtube.com you don't realize it but youtube.com is the second largest search engine in the world whenever anybody wants to learn anything where do they go they go to youtube.com you're here right now learning very true me, with us from youtube.com so Let's go check out Google and our software. So if you have our software, please follow along. It's a great way to get better. So Google's down. It just recently split 20 for 1. That's why the price is at 115. I am going to talk about the stock split in my charting video. I'm going to match some of the stuff up with the chart and share my opinion on uh, how Google, how I think Google is kind of using it for a strategic. Um, I mean, everything in the end, any decision made by a company, there's a strategic thing that they're trying to get out of it, of course. So I am going to touch base on the stock split. And it's down 2% today. It is a low day in the market, but this is something to understand that when the most overpriced company, when the market goes down, overpriced companies tend to drop the most, less overpriced tend to drop the least. So we're going to see where Google stands. Okay, this is the comment that I originally just sort of disagree with. Now, he does say that it tends to to drop more for overvalued companies. And to an extent, he is probably right, but we're talking about one trading day. We're talking about the price action of a company over one day. I guarantee you go out in the market and there's overvalued companies that were even green in the day on Friday. And just touching base back, Google was down 5% on Friday. That is a pretty solid move for Google. And just matching that up with the, the shares outstanding, it is very hard to move 13 billion shares. I mean, there's so many more things that go into the price action for a company in one particular day. And ultimately, it's supply and demand. If more people want to buy than sell, the price is going to go up. If more people want to sell than buy, it's going to go down. To, to state a very vague statement like that, I, I think is a the wrong way of looking at things. But to an extent, I do kind of agree with him. But I just don't like the way that he says it. So that's why I'm making the video on this just for that one statement. So up until this point, I do not know what, what it holds in store for me going forward. But uh, yeah, let's go and uh, continue this video. Stands in that level and spectrum. So over the last year, they hit a high of 150, which was 3,000 a share before the split, and a low of 101. We're going to touch base on that split. Share before the split. So it's on the lower end of that range right now. No dividend. But some very interesting aspects, high return on invested capital, um, very good profit margin, gross margin of 57%, and overall profit margins that are very consistent over the last five years. We have a five-year profit. Okay, a couple things that I want to stay with that. Um, he mentions the high return on invested capital, 22%, um, but doesn't say anything about the disconnect from the five-year average. I guarantee I go to return on invested capital right now. I know because I looked after I made my video. Um, yeah, we're taping Google right here, and we just look at this return on invest capital real quick, and we'll get back to the video. 18 from 2010, basically up until this point, very consistent in their return on invest capital. And then these last two years, year to date and 2021, 25% and 25%. I mean, can you just look? Do do I think that they're going to put up that high return on invest capital looking at their previous years? No. 
No, I don't. I, so I, I do think that there are th definitely things wrong in looking at that. When I see a disconnect in that 22 to 14, I definitely want to go and look at that, guys. You can't just assume, oh, they put up 22% in the last year. They're going to continue that. I think I think it's important to go and look at those particular things. Profit margin of 23.2%, and last year's profit margin. And what did he say about? And what did he say about the profit margins right there? Sorry, guys. I'm gonna uh, rewind Capital. it a little bit right there. Um, very good profit margin, gross margin of 57%, and overall profit margins that are very consistent over the last five years. Okay, he says that the profit margins are very consistent, and looking at the metrics, it's very easy to say that. If I go back and look at the metrics right here, it's very easy to look at this and say, oh yeah, over the last five years, very consistent profit margins, right in line, nothing, nothing to worry about right there, guys, right? Well, let's, let's go look at the profit margins. We just go over. It's very simple. <clears throat> here is the last five years. Here's 2017 to 2021. They go from 11% profit margins to 29%. Is that consistent profit margins, guys? 2020, 2020 and 2021, boom, huge increase. And, I mean, is this consistent? Guys, do you think this is consistent? This is why looking at just simple five-year metrics, it, it can be very misleading, especially when you're talking about the years 2020 and 2021. I got to dis disagree with how he evaluates that, that profit margin right there. I got to disagree. Five-year profit margin of 23.2% and last year's profit margin of 25.9. So let's go to our eight pillars tab real quick to give the recap of our eight pillars. Now, you'll see right here, two things stand out. Two X's. The first and last pillar. These are our valuation metrics. Valuation. Five-year PE and the five valuation and how I match valuation up is based off of growth. I, I don't know what he's gonna say right here, but I, I'm I'm sure I'm going to have to touch base on something that he says. Five-year price of free cash flow, thirty-four point <laughs> seven and thirty-seven, pretty much on the nose. Okay, that's immediately next because we want both those numbers under twenty-two point five. But does that mean we shouldn't buy the company? Well, hang on a second. Just remember, if Google were able, hypothetically, to grow its revenue and profit by 30% or more per year for the next 10 years, I would absolutely buy these, these comp this company right now on those mo If Google grows by 30%, yes, Google is a screaming buy right now. I 100% I agree with that. But also, real quick, he did not touch base. He's using a five-year number. Here, I'll show you guys. Here is a five-year metrics right here. I've already stated that the five-year numbers are definitely skewed based off 2020 and 2021. In my opinion, I think they're skewed. He does not talk about the disconnect in the one-year PE. If I go over and I look at, go back over the revenue, yeah, would I pay 30 plus? He, he states it himself. Would I pay 30 plus if they're getting this growth? Yes, the market has a natural way of pricing in valuation for companies, and it's not always right. It's not always correct. Um, but as you see, the growth is slowing People are going to pay a less premium. People are going to pay a less PE. Does it make sense that their five-year numbers, based off some of those growths that they had, the growth that they had in 2020 and 2021, does it make sense to pay this PE? Yes, but their current PE is 20. It's it's already sort of pricing in that decline in growth. Um, but let's let's keep multiples. listening to it. Because the multiples are contingent on what? It's contingent on growth and moat. I think we'd all agree that it, he states it right there. It's it's contingent on growth and moat, and I I don't think it's out of it's it's out of the question that Google has the moat. I mean, if I were to go pull up Google's brands, I mean they have a ton a ton of brands. It's not just Google and YouTube, the two top search engines, as he states. It, they have so many brands, guys. But um, yes, he states himself. It's based off growth. We're looking at the growth right here. Would I pay that 30 PE for this type of growth? Yes. Would I pay it for this growth? No, I wouldn't. That Google has quite the moat when it comes to online advertising and YouTube. It's going to be hard to take them over. But do they have the growth potential in them? I don't know. So Google is also buying back some shares, which I'm not really a fan of in this model. Hmm. When companies are expensive, have high PEs. I can already tell you guys right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with him on this statement because I've already thought about the amount of shares that they're buying back. But we're gonna listen to what he says right here, and then I'm gonna share my opinion. We don't want the company buying back shares. Buying back shares is very attractive for companies because it can boost the earnings per share, and it's actually good for investors if you're buying back shares of a company, giving the investor a bigger piece of the pie. However, when they're buying back their shares and their shares are expensive. 
they're overpaying for stock. Even if it's their own company, it's like buying another company at a much higher price. So I don't really like that too much. Look at this. Okay, okay, we're gonna touch base on some stuff. So he states that, okay, it's, I, I do agree with his message. You do not want your companies buying back shares when their company is overvalued. You do not want that. But we've already stated that the return on equity, the money they're getting from shareholders, the uh, money they're getting from issuing shares, the money that they're using to buy back shares, they can invest that, they can use that money and get a solid return on equity right there. Um, also, they're not paying a dividend. We're talking five-year average of $40 billion. Even though I, I think that some of those numbers are skewed, over the last five years, they brought in $40 billion every single year in free cash flow. Where are they supposed to put that money? Just sit on $200 billion worth of cash? They're not paying a dividend. They're very low on debt. I, I, I am okay with them You buying back 5% of their shares. That is not a over a drastic amount of share buybacks. I mean, you look at some companies that are buying back 20% plus of their shares that potentially, okay, if they're buying back 20% of their shares at an overvalued rate, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong with that. But then you add in high inflationary times, depreciating the value of the dollar year over year. The value that every year, the value of the dollar is going to decrease. You don't want your company sitting on $200 billion of free cash flow. I want them in. Here's another point. I mean, I, there's so many points I can go off of this. If they weren't, okay, let's look at the free cash flow real quick. You can see this repurchase of capital stock. I guarantee if they weren't repurchasing capital stock like this, the stock of Google would have hammered much more than it did. Guys, I promise you that it would have over this time period if they weren't buying back stocks. They naturally took care of their shareholders in a sense over this course of time by uh, weeding out that that those types of investors that potentially could be going short on the company because those people going short on the company they're fighting up against this type of free cash flow that the company is generating they're looking out for their shareholders by repurchasing capital stock and I would I'm okay with that saying that they could be sitting on 200 billion dollars worth of cash in high inflationary times where the value of the dollar is decreasing. So I I got to disagree with some of the statements that he says about about uh buying back shares. I am okay with them buying back 5% of their shares when they're low on debt. They're not paying a dividend. They got to find some way to utilize that cash. I got to disagree with them debt there. Level. They can pay off all their long-term liabilities with one year of free cash flow. That's incredible. Increase of cash flow in the last five years of 44 billion, increase of profit of 55 billion, and increase in revenue of 154 billion. So, guys, all around, this is a company that screams buy. Okay, so so he goes on to this eight pillars, and this is what he had did earlier as well. He goes on to these eight pillars. He says, okay, they're growing their net income. Okay, they're growing their revenue, but doesn't actually go in and look at those individually. It's very easy for me to go in to their income statement and look at their revenue over the last ten years and look at these look at these massive increases in revenue, guys. It, is it okay to just go on to an eight pillars tab and say, oh yeah, there's revenue growth? And in my video, I also state the net income. Look at these, how consistent they are in net income right here. Boom, huge spike in net income. Boom, huge spike in, in net income. Those are definitely red flags that need to be looked into. And just to simply go on this eight pillars tab and say, oh, yep, that's the net income growth that they have. Let's circle it. It looks good. I think that that is setting people up for failure right there with that going about it that strategy that way I buy buy once the price is the right price but remember it's very possible to overpay for a good thing in fact that's usually what happens stocks are a voting machine in the short run and a weighing machine in the long run whatever is the most popular will get big price jumps in the short run but what matter is the long run so don't overpay for a company just because you love the company don't fall for that trick don't overpay for a company because it's growing fast Growth eventually slows. So we need to use the tools that we have in our software. Growth does eventually slow as, as you get bigger, but there are other there are other things that you need to look at in terms of just stating that vague statement. I, I don't like how he states that, and one of the simple ways that, that you can look at is go to the free cash flow. How do you know that one of these acquisitions that, they're, that they've made multiple acquisitions of isn't going to be a big driver in revenue? And for all, for all we know, Google can continue to grow at that rate. I don't know. But in the end, being conservative is going to take the crown. You know, let's actually, I, I typed this in 
after I'd made my video yesterday, companies owned by Google. And I went down and I simply just looked at all their acquisitions. Uh, oh, yeah, right here. List of mergers and acquisitions by Alphabet, Wikipedia. This is from 2001 right here, guys. 2001. Keep that in mind. We're just going to scroll down. Look at all the acquisitions. And this is the company that they're they're acquiring. We're just going to scroll down. We're only in 2010 right now still. 2012, 2013. They've acquired 250 different companies. Who who is to say that that those acquisitions aren't going to be big drivers in revenue? Yes, as you get bigger, it is harder. But to just vaguely state that that your growth is going to slow because you're getting bigger, th there's a lot more things that you need to look into in terms than just vaguely stating that. I gotta disagree, but overall message I do agree with. It is harder to grow as you get bigger. Where determine all these things before we go do more research and decide when by the company. So if you're new to this channel, I'm Paul. I'm a value investor. As you can tell, I don't want to overpay for things. I want to sit there and use the quantitative aspects of a business to decide if I should go further and research it further in order to buy. I don't believe in overpaying for hype, for growth, or any of these things. We have over 1,700 videos in our collection. Go watch them, especially from a year and a half ago when I was saying no to all the hype stocks that have now fallen 78 okay just a sales pitch to 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 the people watching this video to hey we we've we've done really good and they they do a, they make a lot of great videos and like i said their youtube channel is a lot better than a lot of other but i mean everything they just said right there is just a sales pitch to continue watching the channel and i don't i don't blame them as they are very big and they're continuing to grow i don't blame them for doing that but I, Everything they just stated in that, it, it wasn't necessary, in my opinion. 80, 90%. The ones that haven't, I still think will fall eventually. It just hasn't happened yet. Things like Tesla and Amazon. And that's fine, but my goal... 100% Tesla and Amazon, in my opinion. I shouldn't say 100%. In my opinion, people that are investing large amounts of cash into, into those companies are going to be in for a rude awakening. That's my opinion. I, I do agree with them on that statement, especially with Tesla and Amazon too, but Tesla especially. It's to buy a dollar for much less when the market has mispriced the asset. So now we've done this look at the eight pillars for Google. So the next question is, what price should I pay? That is why we have the stock analyzer tool. Because if you remember, every investment is the present value of all future cash. Okay, so he's getting ready to put in projections for his stock analyzer tool. And me personally, I just don't think that he's dove in enough to these financials to be able to get a clear valuation of the stock analyzer tool. Now, his numbers might might be might be decent. I don't know what they're going to be. Um, but I just don't think that he did enough uh, research. He looked at the eight pillars and kind of stated a couple things. And now he's, in my opinion, I think he's going to go to the stock analyzer tool. And Paul does have a natural way of, of being conservative. But preaching the message that he just preached in the first however many minutes we watched, I think he's setting some of the people up watching his channel up for failure. That's that's my opinion. Well, we don't know what the future holds. All we can do is make assumptions and hope that our range of assumptions are accurate. So we have the stock analyzer tool that we created in order to do this. We first start with the number of years of analysis. 1 to 20. I always pick 10. Now, guys, I do like using 10. Sometimes I use 5. Sometimes I, I use 7, 8. I don't know. It just depends. But most of the time, I do use 10. Um, but I don't, I don't know why that is. I just, I just like 10. If you're serious about investing, I want you to do me a favor. <laughs> I want you to re-watch this section a few times. It's going to go through my thought process of how I look at assumptions for the future. I want to be conservative. I don't want to assume major assumptions. Some of the mistakes I've seen in the past is when, actually all mistakes I've seen in the past is when assumptions don't pan out, which is very frequent, and people make gross assumptions about the future. That is where people get into danger. Look at Tesla right now. I think the assumptions made about the future are absolutely egregious. So we want to make sure we're conservative and we find opportunities to buy when those conservative, the price is selling for less than those conservative <laughs> assumptions make it out to be. So. Okay, so he's getting ready to put in some revenue numbers right here. I would be shocked if Paul used anything near that 20%. Um, honestly, I, based off of everything that he's stated in this video, I would assume he's probably going to use anywhere from 10 to maybe 18, even though I think 18 is probably on the higher side. But I would be shocked if he put in anything north of 20% in for these, for these valuations. Revenue growth. One, five, and 10 years. In the last 10 years, Google's done 21% a year. 
last five years 22.4 and last year 26 so it actually looks like their speed okay if he's getting ready to make a pitch for using 20 percent i'm going to 100 percent disagree if he puts anywhere with 20 percent in for, for this i'm gonna have to disagree and I, i'm i'm going to disagree with that paul a rate of growth is increasing but again they're already huge so the faster and faster you grow the more you grow the slower and slower you're going to grow in the future so I'm okay so that he's basically saying that since since it's a bigger company it's guaranteed that they're not going to be able to continue to grow i mean he didn't go into any of the acquisitions that they made it, it, it it's very tough to say could they grow at that 20 percent i i think that they it's possible for them to it's it's not out of the question for them but to, to vaguely state that there, it's impossible to be able to continue growing at, at at the rate. It is it is possible, and you know for the revenue numbers he's getting ready to put in, he hasn't looked at any of the recent revenue numbers they put up in previous years. So I do kind of disagree with the statement that he made right there because acquisitions, it, it, you never know. I just showed you guys 250 acquisitions that Google has made. I mean, it is possible for that for them to grow. I'm not I'm not stating that it is impossible for them to be able to grow. That it's just me being conservative. He does state being conservative. I agree with some of the message that he's stating, but I don't know. It's tough, guys. I'm going to do 8, 11, and 14% revenue growth. Okay, I, I like those numbers. And like I said, Paul has a natural way of, of adding conservative numbers in right there. And I have nothing wrong with 8 through 14, but I do think there's more information that you got to look into before you are, you are plugging in numbers. For all we know, they're going to put up less than that. I mean, we go look at Apple's revenue – or. Uh, uh, not Apple, Google's revenue. This is very hard and very hard to, or, to me, it's unsustainable. But, I mean, you can already see right here that they're decreasing the, the amount that they're growing right here. So, I, I do agree with the numbers, but just how he got to those numbers is where I have a little bit of a, a disagreement with him. All right. Now, 14% revenue growth is still a lot. It's still yeah, 14 is a lot. Five or six years. That's really, really good. That'll take Google to almost four times more revenue in 10 years than this today. So just keep that in mind before you think I'm being too conservative. Now for profit margin. Like their revenue. Oh boy. This is this is where he did not dive enough into. If he's using profit margins over 25%, this model, in my opinion, is going to be very skewed. And you know, I don't know what numbers he's going to put in right here. But if he uses numbers over 25%, because he does state earlier in the video that uh, consistent profit margins, I, you know, I'm more than likely going to disagree with some of the numbers he puts in right here. I mean, if we go over the macro trends, this is not consistent. Not consistent. If he uses numbers up here in these high 20s, I'm going to 100% disagree with the numbers that he's putting in right here. Your growth, the profit margin is getting better over time. Again. I don't necessarily want to assume that profit margins continue to go up. However, profit margin is more likely to stay up than it is revenue growth because they can keep those margins going. Oh boy, here but we go, guys. We're at the end probably of a cycle of a, a good economy and growth. Profit margins tend to be higher during these times. So Okay, I do I do agree with him with the, with when he's talking about the economic time especially when we're talking about 2020 and 2021 but who knows maybe google can prosper in these times like he didn't dive into any of the profit margins but it, it would be very simple to go back and look at this and say yeah it's 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 understandable that they that they're going to pull back in net profit margin but i i don't know how he's able to determine that so um we he is getting to some of the points that i've made but just this is not consistent this is not consistent so, for my profit margin, I'm going to do 20, 21.5, okay. and 23. Free cash flow margin. I'm okay, I, I, I like those numbers. We'll listen. I'm actually going to do exactly the same thing because... Okay, so putting those numbers in, he does state that um, he, he expects pullback in, in the economy in general, and that is where he's getting the pullback in numbers. But, it, I mean, it would be very easy to just simply go and look at their recent profit margins to be able to determine these numbers. 20 to 23%, I feel, is very justified for, for Google. But there are some scenarios where I might increase the amount of profit margin that I'm using for a company. It, it all depends. And just to vaguely state and not go over enough information on it, I think it's the wrong way of going. But ultimately, we got to around the same area, that 20, those low 20s. I like the low 20s for Google. Profit margin and free cash flow margin should be very similar to each other over long periods of time, just like 
earnings and free cash flow should be very similar over long periods of time. Now these next two uh, um, uh, okay, I, I don't I don't like that statement because com some companies are definitely different and their free cash flow margins are going to differ from their profit margins 100%. Uh, I got to disagree with them there that in some scenarios there are going to be cases where you're going to use different profit margins than free cash flow margins 100%. I I got to disagree with them slightly on that. Are based on multiple <coughs> earnings and free cash flow. But I want you to remember, we want the PE and price of free cash flow assumptions to be where we would assume that it'd be in 10 years, not today. Okay, I, I, he's getting ready to put in PE right here. And uh, honestly, I used, if we look at if we look at some of the numbers that I put, you know, for that type of growth, I, I would pay that, P, that 18. That's adding in a, a decent premium, saying that it's Google, a fundamentally sound business. I, I like the 18 to 2020 or to 22 for the PE based off these growth metrics. I don't know what he's going to put in. His his numbers are pretty similar right there for me. Um, yeah, we'll see what he puts and in right remember, here. The, the larger the company becomes, the slower the growth is going to be. And growth to me is one of the two most important parts of factoring in a PE. The other one is moat. I do agree. I don't the growth. Think the moat is questionable here for Google. No. I don't know many people who use any other search engines. Google is the dominant one. And they also have YouTube, which you're watching us on right now. The number two search engine in the world. Okay, he's, he's only talking about two brands out of the how many brands that Google owns. I mean, this list that I showed right here is just their acquisitions. This isn't going into any of the brands that they own. They own a, a, very, they own a lot more brands than just Google and YouTube, guys. World. So Google owns the top two search engines in the world. That moat is solid. They're simple and they're great. But as they grow, they're not going to be able to grow as fast in the future. So I don't like how he says that. It, it, you can't just simply state that they're not going to be able to grow that much in the future. They're not going to be able to do this. They're not going to be able to do that. You don't know. Paul, you do not know. I want to go down on <coughs> my assumptions for PE. I'm going to do 13, 15, and 17. Now my design... I think that PE is definitely too low, especially when you add in... Uh, you're talking about Google, a fundamentally sound business. If Google can grow at this, I will gladly pay this PE for Google, 100%. Uh, I, I do not like the PE they use. I would use it a little bit higher. Now, I can see why he's being a little bit conservative, adding in that margin of safety. I do, I do like that. Desired annual return. Guys, for a big company like Google with a great balance sheet... I'm okay with a 12 and a half percent return. They have a great balance sheet. Low. I, I would personally use 15 percent return. That's where I bake in my extra margin of safety. Um, 12 and a half percent. Okay, it's fine. You're. you're I, have, I have nothing wrong with that. But I would personally use 15 percent just to add that extra margin of safety. Debt. And on a regular ETF, you can get nine or 10 percent. So I want a little bit more. Mar okay, I would never state it like that. Where where on a regular ETF you can get nine or ten percent. Yes, you yes you can get nine or ten percent. Um, but there there's so many different things that go into that. To simply to vaguely state that you're gonna get nine to ten percent on an ETF, I think is setting people up for for failure. I I agree. I'm, I'm gonna have to agree to disagree right here. That's it. That's. It. I think there's stuff wrong with that statement. Margin of safety, and a reason for buying the stock. So I do twelve and a half percent. Now, I'm going to hit the Analyze button. When we scroll down below, the stock's at 114. If it's all green, that doesn't mean go out and buy everything. It means verify these numbers. If you're not part of our community yet... Okay, he talks about verifying the numbers. He talks about verifying the numbers. I don't think that Paul did enough research in looking through the financials to be able to put those projections up there. Ultimately, we came to roughly the same numbers in a sense except for a little bit of disconnect in the PE but I don't think he put in enough uh, research to be able to put these projections I think uh, preaching that message to the people watching his channel is gonna naturally set people up for failure now it might not naturally set them up for failure but I, I think there's so much so a lot more to go into in terms of looking at the financials than just simply looking at the eight pillars and then plugging in numbers for the company join the community Spend the less than a cup of coffee per day to get access to thousands of people who are talking about. Here we go with another sales pitch towards the Everything Money software. Now, I will agree with him that, that I, I do get pretty solid value from the Everything Money software. But uh, if it's if it's used 
to the right if it's used the right way you can definitely get very good uh, information from the software but just another sales pitch that he's adding into his video I don't like I don't like the sales pitch in videos that's just me personally but yeah stocks every single day there's somebody in that community there's lots of people in that community who've looked at Google go learn from what they found it's better to do research as a whole than individually if it's all red it doesn't mean ignore it the stocks at 114 if it's pretty close, let's say the price is 100, then go add it to your watch list. It'll get added to your watch list and it'll notify you through the app and through the website and through email when the stock has hit your your price list on the watch list. I do like that feature with this software that I can just add something to the watch list and it'll notify me when it gets there. So even though it's a sales pitch, I mean, there is some good stuff that the Everything Money software does have to offer. Okay, so hit the analyze button, boom. Low end, 65. High end, 137. In the middle is 95. So what? Okay, so there you guys have it right there. Um, yeah, pretty much the same areas right there. Um, I, I, me personally, I just think I like the numbers that I use personally better. It's the same exact projections in a sense, but uh, there was definitely some 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 good points that I wanted to point out in terms of his evaluation for Google. And guys, I think there's a lot more information that you have to dive into before you plug just random numbers in we did come to the same conclusion but uh in a different fashion for sure what am i doing i'm actually going to add it it looks I'm like this is going to be the end of it yeah adding it at 100, 100 i'd say that's that's so that's now, a decent the area going to notify me to 100 dollars but it's a great starting point so if you like this great video, starting point please this looks like it video is video going to be the end of this yeah um all in all i i mean you guys heard my opinion on this i'm not going to reiterate any of the statements that I make uh, yeah that's my take on on Paul's evaluation for Google I, I had to disagree with them on some points but ultimately we came to the same conclusion uh, I hope you guys like the content in this video definitely longer than my normal videos if you guys don't want to watch it you know that's fine that's up to you guys but yeah we will see you guys on my next video where I go over the charting uh, for Google and yep see you on the next one